Uh, I can't believe I did that. Oh, what good are plans if you don't follow them? Hello and welcome to the channel. I hope this video finds you well. Today we're going to be breaking down this piece of um, eight quarter mahogany. I'm just roughly, you know, writing down kind of where the pieces are so I know how to uh, roughly chop it up. This particular piece of wood had a lot of spring in it. Uh, probably wasn't a good idea to use the chop saw. It did okay, but I really should be using the jigsaw to break these big pieces down. So this piece of wood was a little bit too big for my uh, jointer. Little got a little wobble in it, so I've got these handy shims and this this really flat shelving um, that I use to shim it up, get it level, and keep it stuck with some hot glue. And it just really helps to to you know level it it out and then flip it over and, and make a parallel surface. And that's all part of my you know operation when it, it just doesn't fit on the jointer. If you watch any of my videos, you know that this is one of my favorite ways to remove the hot glue is just heat up an old putty knife and then uh, it goes through it like a hot knife through butter. Or should I say, a hot putty knife through glue. <laughs> Now that I got the larger pieces milled, I need to break them down into individual components. I'm going to be switching out to my thin kerf blade, uh, my ripping blade, and a little um, stabilizer plate. And that just helps me go through this larger material with my slightly underpowered table saw. It goes through it really quickly. The bandsaw does have the capacity to resaw this piece. This is actually the top and bottom. It's a really wide piece, and I just find that it's easier to do a bulk of the cuts uh, with the table saw, just slowly raising the blade and always keeping the same face against the fence. And then I take it over to the bandsaw and just finish it off. And it's just a really, really short cut for that uh, the bandsaw. Okay, so it's been a couple of days uh, since the last time you saw me. Um, <laughs> I couldn't figure out the best way to cut this. You know, I had my drawings here, um, but I started questioning things. I started looking at this, for instance, and the math didn't add up. Um, and I don't know, I had to take a break and stop. And one of the things I think I'm learning as I go through my journey of woodworking is, is that yeah, you can wing it on certain things, but you know, when it comes to material cost and things like that, sometimes you gotta take a step back and actually plan. So that's what I did. So this is a lesson learned. And I'll have these, you know, plans, you know, and things uh, on the website for sale, just, uh, and I'll put a link down in the description. But, so this is what I've got. So I came up, I've got great dimensions now that I know. I know how everything's gonna fit together. I know how everything's gotta be cut. And you know, that's, you know, again, that's a tip for, for anybody out there that's just getting started into woodworking is that, you know, take a step back, plan it. If you're better at math and sketching, do it that way, but use some way of planning it. So that's, uh, that's Ed's tip of the day. <laughs> now back to the build.
camera I laid out my cut lines here um, so where the X's are that's the waist and what we're looking at here is the uh, the side pieces I should also note that the front and back pieces will have very similar cuts and I'm just going to use my dado blade just one of the dado blades because it has a flat grind on the teeth so that I don't get um, like a W shape when I go to cut the uh, the grooves Uh, I can't believe I did that. Oh, what good are plans if you don't follow them? Uh, okay, so what I did was, I'm not supposed to cut the bottom to this depth. Um, it needed to be five eighths on top, a quarter on the bottom. So then I could come back and put a half inch here to get this. Uh, it'll make sense when I get it Put together but oh that just set me back um, luckily I do have uh, a couple of pieces uh, that are about the size that I can I can use it's from the same piece of wood so all's not lost but dang it that's just uh, unfortunate to set me back okay well let me go get that done and I'll come back and we'll we'll pick up <laughs> here This shoulder plane from Tay Tools, this was my first time using it, did a really good job just cleaning up those, uh, those grooves um, to make it so that everything just set flat. I'll have links to this uh, shoulder plane and all the tools that I use down in the description. relatively new to woodworking. I've only been at this for a couple of years now and I'm trying to challenge myself with each and every project 
and what I'm trying to eventually get up to is to do a little bit more fancier joinery on some jewelry boxes, a cigar um, humidors, things like that. So I'm baby stepping up to that, and this is you know a little bit a, a single finger joint. I don't know what you technically would call it. Like I said, I'm new to this, um, but I'm trying to uh, just make this joint. I didn't know exactly how to approach it, so I decided to just take the chisel. Uh, it helps to be sharp and just chill it out a little bit at a time taking you know cutting across the grain cutting with the grain and then finally just chopping it out and it worked out really well and I think I, I think I got really tight joints one of them was a little loose as, as you might see here in a little bit So now comes that challenging part. I've got to make this groove fit the notch that I just made and make sure that it's a, a tight connection. One of the grooves was a little bit loose, but stick around and I'll show you a, a trick that I picked up by watching others on how that you can hide your mistakes with some glue and some sawdust. Like I said earlier, there was a lot of movement in this wood, a little spring to it, and so this, this top and bottom did move a little bit. So I just am taking a little small cuts off of it, and what I did was I used that pencil so that I could really see to where I got it down to past that pencil mark so I knew it was flat without taking too much off. I've learned that you do want to do some sanding before you assemble the pieces. It, uh, it helps to get most of the sanding done on the pieces that will be very challenging to get to after, you know, after it's all assembled. I'm using some type on three here for a couple of reasons I typically use them on all my cutting boards because it's a little bit more water resistant and it is uh, food safe and it does give you a little bit more working time I don't know what happened I think the video cut off and you'll see one clamp on here but I did wind up putting clamps all the way around to hold the bottom on. 
I know I'm probably supposed to have the plate in here, but uh, my, my router bit didn't fit um, through there. It was a little bit too big for the plate, so it did take it off. I felt it was safe because my hands were so far away. Um, it was a big piece. It wasn't going to get pulled down in here. So I made the calculated decision to move forward. But certainly, you know, you judge for yourself your own safety. You are in charge of your own safety. I will be ordering bigger throat plates too. I love this little trick you can see there was a little bit of a groove there but I just take some of the sawdust from the type of wood that you're using mix it up with some uh, glue and then just use it as like putty and fill in all of the gaps as you see I'm doing here let it dry sand it and it just it looks so natural I'm going to sand that uh, putty mixture off with uh, 120 and then I'm going to sand all the way up to 220. I'm going to wet the wood with a, just a wet paper towel, come back with 220 and then finally finish the sanding with some 320. You definitely want to make sure you do this step because you want it to raise the grain so that you can sand it rather than when you give it away as a gift or, or even sell it. You don't want it happening to them. There are a lot of different ways that you could accomplish this. You, know, you can use a CNC like I'm using. You can use a, a router to uh, put up a fence. Uh, you can create your own template out of uh, quarter inch MDF. Uh, you know, you, you pick whichever way works for you. Uh, the plans that I will have for sale will include a, uh, an image, a vector image that you can print out, glue to it, and use that as a router guide. This is absolutely my favorite uh, time in the project is applying finish. It's where you get to see that crane just come to life and it pop. Uh, you know, I put a couple of coats of this mineral oil, let it soak in for 20 minutes or so, wiped it down, and then I followed that up with some uh, board conditioner that's got a little bit of beeswax in it to help uh, give it a protective coating. Simple, easy uh, finish to apply. This cutting board was a blast to make. I learned so much. I've already been using it a ton. If you'd like to make your own, check down in the links down in the description for uh, tools that I use, for the plans. All of that will be down there. I hope you enjoyed it. I, if you did, give it a thumbs up, uh, comment, share, hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed. And until next time, I wish you and your family a blessed day. Thank you.